Hi, welcome to Unit 3.2. We're talking about rational inequalities. So just to recall, you know, what are inequalities? Well, the big deal here is that you guys know that this is less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than, equal to. But to recall, recall the steps we use for polynomial inequalities. We're going to do something very simple, very similar. We want to get everything to one side. We want a zero on one. We want to get it down so I can factor as best as possible. And then we're going to use that big difference between any regular solve and an inequality is that we're going to use that sign chart which is where we are uh, testing intervals for positivity and negativity so that's the that's the big thing that we're going to be doing today is rational inequalities which again should feel pretty easy it should feel the same as before um, the only difference now is I'm throwing in some fractions that's it so here's that big deep dive into what rational inequalities are and their difference between um, a polynomial. But really, I just want you to focus on the steps. And I'm going to write the steps even clearer later. So just focus here and copy in just a moment or take a photo in just a moment. So the first thing you want to do is get everything to one side. And you, that means you want to zero on one side. But the other thing to recognize about your whatever left hand or other side of your zero is that it is one rational expression. So even if you have multiple fractions, you've got to get it down to one fraction. Then you're going to find the alternate expression, which just means simplify. Get it down to its simplest form, um, which means, you know, typically we're going to factor out any polynomials. In both the numerator and the denominator, you're going to find the zeros, roots, or undefined po points, which means set them equal to zero. Then we use our sign chart, and finally we finish this all. So I have an example problem here for us. 4 over x minus 6 plus 2 over x plus 1 is greater than 0. Here's that simple step that I, sh I told you about. So take a moment, take a photo, copy this down, whatever you have to do. So simply get one fraction and get a 0. Then simplify. Set all, which means the numerator and the denominator equal to 0. Use a sign chart and solve. So looking at this, looking at step one, I can see, oh, look at that. I already have my zero. So check, we're good on that. But I have two fractions. So I have to deal with that using my least common denominator. And remember, if you're struggling with this, go to my algebra video, uh, algebra playlist on here and watch the video on fractions. OK, so we're going to use the least common denominator, which means that I'm going to end up multiplying each portion by the other denominator. But I have to do it in a form of one. So a form of one would be x plus one over x plus one. That's my left hand side. My right hand fraction, I'm actually going to multiply by x minus six over x minus six. And technically, whatever I did to the right, you know, I'm, I should have done to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and deal with that. So this was my. Uh, right hand side so or whatever I did to the left I should do to the right so here we have a brand new denominator in each right we have x plus 1 times x minus 6 as both of our new denominators and anything times 0 is simply 0 so that's still going to be 0 all I have to do is figure out my numerator this is going to be 4 and we multiply across so that's simply going to say 4 times x plus 1 plus 2 times x minus 6 now I'm going to distribute these values and I'm going to add my fraction. So we have a brand new single fraction of x plus 1 times x minus 6. And on top we have 4x and then I distributed that other one plus 4. And then we have a 2x minus 12. And then we bring that plus and technically this whole thing is in parentheses. Mainly because if this was negative we would have to distribute the negative. This is still greater than zero. So I'm going to go ahead and combine my like terms, which are this and these right here. So that becomes 6x uh, minus 8 over x plus 1 times x minus 6 is greater than zero. So now I've done step one, and I'm in my simplest form. So I've done step two. So now I'm ready to set all parts equal to zero. So I'm just going to clear some room for myself. Okay, so I'm going to set my, denom my numerator equal to zero. I'm going to set my denominators equal to zero every part. Okay, the bottom ones are real easy. This is just going to say minus one, minus one, so this is x equals negative one. This is going to say plus six, 
I got two close to the bottom there. Plus 6 plus 6 on both sides, so this is going to be x equals positive 6. Over here, though, we have a coefficient from the x, so this is going to be plus 8, um, which means 6x equals 8, but I have to divide by 6. And I can simplify that down even further into 4 thirds. So now I have 4 thirds, negative 1, and 6. We're ready to put it into a sign chart. So I go ahead and make my handy dandy sign chart, negative 1, 4 thirds, and 6, and I put them in um, numerical order from descending to ascending, so from smallest number to largest number. Now I'm going to pick random numbers, and just to make it easy on you guys, I'm going to uh, color code it for you. So in this interval, I'm going to pick negative 2 because that's something from negative infinity to negative 1. In the interval, negative 1 to 4 thirds, that number could be 0. In the interval 4 thirds to 6, that number could be 2. And on the interval 6 to positive infinity, that number could be 7. So I'm going to go ahead and test those numbers back. Previously, we simply tested it in our polynomial, but our factored form. Now, we have a rational that has been factored. So I'm going to create little bitty fractions in every interval. And if I test the numerator, negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Negative 12 minus 8 would still be negative. Negative 2 plus 1 would still be negative. Negative 2 minus 6 would still be negative. So that's three negatives. That's an odd number of negatives. That means this stays negative. If I plug in 0 up top, that's going to be negative. Right here, that's going to be positive. Right here, that's going to be negative. I have an even number of negatives, so that means this is positive. If I plug in 2, 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 8 is a positive number. 2 plus 1 is a positive number, but 2 minus 6 is negative. I have an odd number of negatives, so this is going to be negative. If I plug in 7, 7 times 6 minus 8, that's going to be positive. 7 plus 1 is positive. 7 minus 6 is also positive. So I end up with a negative number, or a positive number. So it went negative, positive, negative, positive. So then I go back to my solve. That's my last point. And I look for the last inequality I used. I could look back at the original question. However, as you're going to see in another example, we have to remember how inequalities work. And when you divide and multiply by negative numbers, you actually have to flip the inequality sign. We didn't do that in this example. Uh, we didn't have one of those instances. But I always want you guys to have that procedure. Go back to the last little bit. Go back to what you tested on. Well, this says that my, my rational is greater than zero. That means we're looking for positive values. That means I am looking for this interval right here and this interval right here. Now, in the polynomial inequality unit, I told you guys to go ahead and cross out these tested values because I don't want you to accidentally use them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I can write my interval, and I can see it's from negative 1 to 4 thirds. I'm not going to get confused by the negative 2 or the 0 anymore. And it's also from 6 to positive infinity. But am I 100% done? Well, I'm going to check. This says greater than. It does not say equal to. So I'm using parentheses in the positive interval. Yeah. So I did a good self-check for myself. Cool beans. Now let's go ahead and look at it. Um, I've got it written out in computer form, text typed out. So if you need to pause and review this, look at it. Um, I did my least common denominator over here a little bit different, but it's the exact same concept. All right, here's my second uh, solve that I want us to work on. So again, step one was to get down to one fraction. Cool. We currently have one fraction. And to get it to zero, ooh, we don't have a zero. So I'm going to have to go ahead by subtracting this one. Now that's going to leave us with x plus 6 over 4x minus 3. And my minus 1 is going to come to the outside of that fraction. Why? This is already set. I can't adjust that when I balance my equations. It has to go to the outside. So that's going to be greater than or equal to 0. Now I do that check again. I'm at zero. Do I have one fraction? Unfortunately, I don't. I've got this one over here by itself. So I'm going to deal with that one. I'm going to multiply it by the denominator of the other fraction because it's just one. So I'm just going to get two denominators that look the same. And technically, we multiplied the right side too, but it's just zero, so it doesn't really matter. So it's going to be x plus 6 over 4x minus 3 minus for one times anything is simply itself, so that's going to be this. And I left it in its parentheses so that I remember to distribute this negative up top. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and combine my fractions, so I get one big fraction, 4x minus 3. And up top I have x plus 6 minus 
4x minus 3 is greater than 0. So now I'm going to distribute that negative, and that's going to become x plus 6 minus 4x plus 3 all over 4x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Combine my like terms here, here, right here, and right here. That becomes negative 3x plus 9 over 4x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So step 1, do I have a single fraction? Check. Step step 1 as well, is it a 0? Check. Step 2, is it simplified? Check. Can't do anything else with this. I mean, I could factor out this 3, but that's about it. Um, beyond that, it's as simple as, it, as I want it to be. So I could factor out that 3 and go ahead and leave it like this. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to make myself some space to go ahead and do my next few steps. I'm going to set all to zero, which means I'm going to set both my numerator and my denominator equal to zero, and I'm going to make a sign chart. And as you can see, I only have two, two terms right now, so that's all we're really going to use. Okay, so we've got, I'm going to do it on this side, three times negative x plus 3 equals 0, and 4x minus 3 equals 0. So if I divide that 3, that's just going to zero out, so that doesn't matter. Then if I subtract this 3, we've got our first little bit. Negative x equals negative 3. Well, if I drop those negatives, then that means x equals positive 3. So I add this 3 over, and that has 4x equals 3, divide by 4, divide by 4. So there's our other one. So I create my sign chart, and I've got 3 and 3 fourths. So, I want to make sure I'm doing this. Okay, I'm just checking my work against my other work. So, I'm going to have three fourths over here. Oops. And three over here. I'm going to pick a different color just so y'all can see uh, my tested values. This should be my zero. This is one. And this should be four. Okay, so we're going to test uh, zero into this one down here. My factored, canceled, rational form. So, if I plug in zero up top, um, actually, let's look at this as 3, negative 3x three plus 9. That's a little easier to see. If I plug in 0 up top, then this is going to be a positive on top. If I plug in 0 on bottom, it's going to be negative. So I have a even num or sorry, an odd number of negatives. That means this must be negative. If I plug in 1 up top, three negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 9 is still positive. And on bottom, uh, if I plug in 1, that's 4 times 1 minus 3, that's still positive. So 2 positive, that's going to make a positive. If I plug in 4 up top, negative 4 times 3, or sorry, negative 3 times 4 is going to be negative 12 plus 9 is negative. And 4 times 4 is 16 minus 3 is positive. So this is going to be negative. So I look at the last thing that I did, which is my... Uh, inequality right here, which tells me my rational is greater than or equal to zero. That means I'm looking for positive and equal to zero. So that's going to be this unit right here, but I have to figure out where it's equal to zero. So that means this time I have to test my uh, roots. I've got to figure out whether it's going to be a zero or undefined. This is the big difference between a polynomial and a rational. So I plug back in three and um, I'm trying to figure out where I got some room. I don't. So I'm going to move all this out of the way. Sorry about that. Okay. I plug back in 3. And I get negative 3 times 3 plus 9 over 4 times 3 minus 3. So negative 3 times 3, here's my 0. That's what we're looking for, my 0. Here's my 0. Negative 9 plus 9, that's going to be my 0 up top. This is not going to 0 out. So that means at 3, we have a true 0 point. So that's okay. That means 3 is a 0. Now I plug in my 3 fourths. Negative 3 times 3 fourths plus 9 over 4 times 3 fourths uh, minus 3. And here we have 3 minus 3. Now we have a 0 on bottom. So that means this is my undefined point. That means 3 fourths is not a 0. That means it cannot include it. So my interval is going to go from 3 fourths, not including it, and then I include 3 with the bracket. So that's my end answer. So the biggest difference between the rational poly, uh, inequality and the polynomial inequalities is that 1, we have fractions, so that means you're going to test both the top and the bottom. Don't forget to do that. Test both top and bottom. And even when you plug it back in, you're testing both top and bottom. The second big difference is that you have to test your 
zero points, quote unquote, I'm going to put quote zero. They're not real zeros. Sometimes they're undefined points. Test my zero points because as you just saw, if I had written this as two brackets, we would have had the incorrect answer. All right, to wrap up, and oh, by the way, here is the type form if you need to pause and look it through it. Um, to wrap up, I want to talk about a real world inequality. So we have this any, we have this word problem. A group of high school students is renting a bus for $600 to take to an amusement park the day after prom. The ticket to the amusement park are $60, less an extra 50 cent group discount per person in the group. Write and solve an inequality that can be used to determine how many students must go on the trip for the total cost to be less than $40 per student. Let X represent the number of students. Wow, that's a mouthful. What are we even trying to do? Well, we're trying to write inequality, but how do we write that equation? How can we write that inequality? We're gonna do what we do with all word problems. Chunk it out, break it up step by step. So we're gonna identify our givens. Wouldn't renting a bus for $600 be one of them? Absolutely, what else? There we go, $60 a ticket, and we get to subtract 50 cents per person for a group discount, heck yeah. Then what are we looking for? We're looking for the total cost to be less than $40 per student. So the first thing I do with the word problem is I identify what's important. All the rest doesn't matter. I could literally scratch out everything else and say, eh, doesn't matter, right? So then we have to identify what each of these little pieces mean. So renting a bus for $600, that's the same as saying our total cost is $600 for the bus. However, not one student is paying for it. We're going to divide that equally so all students can pay for it. So what does that look like? That looks like 600 divided by the number of students. So that's 600 divided by X. Our next one is saying that it's $60 a ticket. That means, okay, so we got a ticket cost of $60, but what does less an extra 50 cents group discount per person mean? It means for every person who attends this activity, we're gonna take 50 cents off. So if two, one person comes, we're gonna take 50 cents off $60. Two people, we're gonna take a dollar. Three people, a dollar 50, et cetera. So you see what we did, we're taking 50 cents and multiplying it by the number of people and subtracting that from the original cost. So we get an equation of $60 minus 0.5x. Finally, we look at what does less than $40 mean? Well, that's our inequality. So we would literally write that as less than $40. So all we have to do is put those pieces together. We know that students must pay for their share of the bus, that they must own the amusement park ticket, which includes the discount, and that it should be less than $40. Plug it all together and boom, you have an inequality. Now you can solve that inequality. So here's my inequality. Step one, do I have one fraction? Do I have a zero? I don't have a zero, so I'm gonna bring that 40 over. Boom, now I have a zero, but I don't have one fraction. So I'm gonna first combine my like terms because we have a $60 and a $40 or minus $40, so we can combine that into 20. Now I'm gonna use least common denominators. I have a denominator right here. Uh, I have a denominator right here of X. Right here, these denominators are technically their natural denominator of one. So to make these common, I'm gonna multiply them by X. But I can't just multiply by X, I have to multiply by X in the form of one. And X in the form of one, we know is gonna look like X over X. So I'm gonna multiply this right here, and I'm gonna multiply right here, and technically on the right side as well. So there we have our multiplied by least common denominators. I multiply throughout, and this is what that looks like. Now I can actually combine those fractions, and boom, step one is now done. I have one equation, or sorry, I have one fraction, and I have one zero. Now step two. Simplify, find the alternate expression. So as you can see, I went ahead and converted negative 0.5 into negative 1 half. Why? So we could get rid of it. We don't like coefficients in front of our x squared. So I went ahead and multiplied everything by negative 2. But when I do this, I have to remember to distribute. Not only is it going to go here to cancel out the negative 1 half, but I'm going to have to distribute it here and right here. And whatever I did to the left, I did to the right. So that's what that looks like. But remember, when I multiplied that negative two to the right-hand side, when I balance out that equation, that means that I have to flip my inequality. So just a reminder, and I showed it to you here. Okay, so finally, now we get to factor out, and now it's in its simplest form. Guess what we get to do now? We get to set everything equal to zero. So that's gonna be x plus two equals zero, x minus 60 equals zero, and x equals zero. So we get these three terms back. We plug that into a sign chart, which I'm going to go ahead and do for you right now. 
and we put negative 20, oops, negative 20, 0, and 60. And in each, we're going to have a little fraction so that we can test it out. So I need my tested values. This is negative 21. This is negative 5. I'm going to put positive 5, and I'm going to put 61. So negative 21 up top, negative 21 plus 20 is going to be negative. Negative 21 minus 60 is going to be negative. And negative 21 itself is negative. So odd number of negatives means this is a negative value. I plug in negative 5 plus 20, that's going to be positive. Negative 5 minus 60 is negative, and negative 5 itself is negative. I have an even number of negatives, so positive. Then 5, I plug it in, and this is positive. 5 minus 60 is negative. 5 itself is positive, so an odd number of negatives is negative. 61 plus 20 is positive. 61 minus 60 is positive. 61 is positive, so this ends up being positive. Again, I scratch out my tested values, and I look back at my last inequality. Here is where it becomes crucial that you guys are using just the last inequality. As you can see, it is clearly different than the inequalities we were using at the very beginning. So now I'm looking for what's positive. No equals, just what's positive. So that's this test, that's this t uh, interval and this interval. So we write that out as negative 20 to 0 as well as 60 to positive infinity. Okay, so are we done? Actually, no, we're not 100% done. Why? Because this is a word problem. So we actually have to answer what the question was, was finding for us, right? So what was it asking for us? It was asking, there it is, it was asking for us to know the minimum number of students that allows the students to pay only $40. Well, what's our minimum number of students? Well, we just wrote down negative 20 to 0 and 60 to positive infinity. Okay, if you haven't figured it out yet, let's look at these values. Negative 20 to 0, what are all those values going to be? Negative numbers. Can I have a negative number of students? No, we can't. So this is where it makes it a little easier once we solve word problems. Because our end answer should make sense in a logistical world. It should make sense in a real world situation. So this means the minimum number of students would be 60, um, well actually only approaching 60. It's not even... 60, but it's approaching 60, so technically it's 61 if we wanted to be accurate. But we could say, uh, we could go ahead and write it as the minimum number of students to pay $40 or less would be 60, right? So boom, we finished. So just to have a little bit of closure, except for our rational inequality, remember, you're going to want to get down to one fraction and one zero. Do whatever you have to do. If you multiply or divide by a negative number on your inequality, you have to flip that sign. If you do it twice, you got to flip it twice, okay? Um, or three times, whatever, however many times. Then you are going to simplify, find the alternate expression. And what you want to end up doing is get it as factored as possible in all parts, the numerator and the denominator. Then you're going to set all parts equal to zero. Set your numerator and your denominator. If you've got factored bits, set each factored bit equal to zero. Those are the parts of your sign chart now. Test your intervals in your sign chart. And remember, with rationals, you actually have to test your zero points uh, if you have greater than or equal to uh, less than or equal to. You actually have to test those zero points because you could get an undefined. And undefines are not zero. That means you cannot include it. That means you have to use parentheses and not brackets. Finally, you finish your solve. And again, if it's greater than or less than, brackets. If it's greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, you might be, sorry, I said that backwards. If it's greater than or less than, parentheses. If it's greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, you might be using brackets. Infinities cannot use brackets. Undefines cannot use brackets. All right? Again, if word problems are what you're struggling with, learn to read and interpret that information. Go to the algebra lab. Go to my algebra review video if you're struggling with our fractions, if you're struggling with factoring, any of these older algebra concepts that you're struggling with. If I don't have a video up, shoot me a message, request it, and I will get it out to you. And I'll see you guys in class.